What if tigers were introduced into the African savanna? Seven big cats spread all over the world, dominating their habitats and able to all exist because they aren't all living in the same region. However, we're about to shake all of that up. We're going to be taking species of big cats and moving them into habitats they don't exist in, introducing them to the other big cat species and watching how things will unfold. Will it work out all right or will there be absolute chaos? The big move we're making today is going to span thousands of miles and we'll answer the questions. What if tigers were introduced into the African savanna? African savanna. Let's first look at the eventual destination of the tigers that we will be moving, the African savanna. When many people think of the African savanna, they think of the wildlife, they think of big cats. Yes, there are many big cats that live here, but tigers are not one of those big cats. For starters, we mentioned that there are seven types of big cats in the world. There are dozens of feline species, but only seven that qualify as big cats. They are lions, jaguars, leopards, snow leopards, cheetahs, cougars, and of course, tigers. Many of these big cats have been spread out across the globe, making their existence easier, not having to contend with others too much. For instance, the Americas have jaguars and cougars. Asia has tigers, snow leopards, and leopards. And then Africa also has leopards, along with lions and cheetahs. This is a nice balance, a fair distribution of these powerful predators known as big cats. But the African savanna is one area that is already replete with predators, several of them being big cats. Any more big cats getting introduced here, and who knows what will happen? In addition to the lions, cheetahs, and leopards, other predators in the African savanna include hyenas, jackals, African wild dogs, and several types of birds of prey like eagles and falcons. With the birds, there is always a pecking order. But as you can see, looking at some of these other predators, the African savanna has a pecking order with the rest of the predators too. You have jackals though vicious. They're usually between 20 and 30 pounds. African wild dogs range between 40 and 80 pounds. Leopards, cheetahs, and hyenas all range roughly between 50 and 150 pounds. Of course, there are always larger specimens of these species, but none of them will ever exceed 250 pounds. And then there is the lion, not king of the jungle, king of the savanna. Lions will typically be between 6 and 8 feet long and weigh between 350 and 500 pounds. It's quite clear who gets first dibs on meals in the African savanna. When these predators are looking for food, they'll turn to animals like wildebeest, zebras, buffalo, impalas, gazelles, and others. There are other animals which are not predators, but their massive size makes it fairly easy for them to not become prey, like rhinos, hippos, giraffes, and elephants. Although that's not to say they're never hunted. It happens. Now, when we're talking about the African savanna, it does cover a wide range of land on the continent of Africa. Because the savannas tend to be around 8 to 20 degrees away from the equator, they stay hot to warm all year round. They tend to not get any colder than 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the coldest months and at night. But typically, the temperatures stay between 65 degrees and 85 degrees. African savannas have wet seasons, but the dry seasons last much longer. These savannas can go for months without rain causing there to be fewer trees than other habitats, much plant life that can thrive without water, and in many cases, extreme drought. So that is where we're going to move the tigers to. But where are they currently? Habitat of a tiger. Tigers live in many places, but none of those places are African savannas, nor are they anywhere in Africa. No, tigers are strictly found in Asia, but in many places in Asia. They actually are found in a variety of different habitats, from rainforests to temperate forests, from the constant heat in places near the equator to places far from the equator that experience the change of the four seasons. The range of tigers is impressive, one of the largest ranges in terms of any of the big cats. They live as far south as the equator all the way up to 50 degrees north of the equator, 
making them highly adaptable. Most other big cats pick a specific habitat and live in a fairly tight temperature range and get used to specific weather. But the tiger will take it all on. Tigers have been found to live in swampy areas and certain plains, but they much prefer forests as they like to blend in with the trees, especially when attempting to sneak up on their prey. They've been found at a variety of altitudes from nearly sea level to as high as 11,000 feet in certain Montan forests. Tigers have their preferences, but they will make it work wherever they have to, whether it be a forest in Russia that experiences winter, spring, summer, and fall, or if it is a rainforest in Indonesia with constant warmth and humidity. All about the tiger. So what does a tiger eat, considering it can be found in vastly different habitats? Well, they make do wherever they live, but they'll hunt for animals like wild boar, deer, water buffaloes, and pigs. If there are sheep, goats, and cattle nearby, they'll get those too. They've even been known to eat monkeys, elephant calves, and crocodiles. Their diet needs to be flexible to fit the areas they live in, but they prefer larger animals so that they can have one big meal all at once. That is often the case with large predators like the tiger. They're not always guaranteed a meal, so when they get one, they'd like for it to be a large amount, to nourish them for a good deal of time. In fact, they'll often hunt and eat about once a week, and when they do eat, they might eat up to 75 pounds in one sitting. So if we've got a tiger that's taking down deer and water buffaloes and crocodiles, and eating 75 pounds in one sitting, then he must be pretty big. Indeed, tigers are the largest of all the big cats in the world. They'll typically be between 8 and 10 feet long and will weigh between 500 to 700 pounds. They are extremely muscular felines, able to jump 18 to 20 feet and run up to 40 miles per hour. These are scary qualities of the already enormous cat if you are a deer or water buffalo in the area. Then again, tigers are ambush predators. They won't be keeping up those speeds of 40 miles per hour for long distances, so that's the only shot that its prey has, to try to outlast the tiger. However, the tiger is smart and knows this. That is why the tiger uses its stripes to camouflage with its surroundings. It sneaks up on the prey, remaining undetected. The tiger gets as close as he possibly can, and then once the moment is right, he strikes. When the tiger pounces, he'll use his four-inch long retractable claws that are sharp and curved to dig into his prey. Tigers are strong, able to lift twice their body weight. So if their prey thinks they might be able to escape the clutches of a tiger, think again. You'd have to be pretty big to win that battle. And their jaws are extremely powerful one of the most powerful sets of jaws when it comes to big cats. They have a bite force of around 1,050 psi. So, imagine you're the prey, and imagine a tiger's jaws coming down with that force, equivalent to the weight of a grand piano coming down on you, all while their 33-inch long teeth sink into you. This is no picnic for you, but this is exactly the kind of picnic that a tiger is looking for. And for these reasons, the tiger is the apex predator wherever he goes. China, Thailand, Russia doesn't matter. The tiger is the apex predator in all the Asian countries he lives in. But what exactly is going to happen when we pick a few tigers up and drop them in the African savanna? Tiger Relocation We're picking up some tigers from Asia and shipping them off to the African savanna. The tigers are getting dropped down, let's say roughly 10 degrees north of the equator, right in the heart of Africa. It's 80 degrees. Tigers can deal with that. Many of them are used to that. It's dry. Some tigers live in dry climates, others in wet climates. No matter, this is the most adaptable big cat in the world. They'll make it work. There are trees, but many of them are spaced far apart. Not exactly preferable for the tigers. They prefer forests, plenty of tree cover. Now that's not to say there isn't tree cover and that there aren't places to hide out, but it likely isn't like back home. Tigers are used to a thick tree line and a heavy canopy of trees overhead, and that just is not the case here. 
This is something the tigers will realize immediately. They're going to have to improve their hunting and stalking game. It's going to be harder to stay hidden and chase down prey, so they're going to have to be more precise. These things are manageable, though. They need to find some good sources of water, too. Tigers love the water. If you're only familiar with lions and cheetahs, you may not know that big cats love water. Tigers are the biggest fans of it. They swim in it. They wade in it. They just chill in it. They don't want to get hot. So being in the water is a great way to cool off. As the tigers get used to their surroundings, they'll find the places with the best water supplies. They'll definitely be hanging out there. African animals beware. Now, the real question is, what's going to happen when these tigers encounter the local animals? Tigers have some similar features and hunting techniques as their big cat cousins, so they'll fit right in. And actually, there's something about tigers that you might not know. They can roar, but they often don't. Instead, tigers do a sound called chuffing. It's a series of low-frequency sounds that they often make, whereas lions will communicate with roars. The tigers will roar to let others know that they're in charge, but they often like to be on their own. Tigers are solitary animals, unlike lions who tend to like to stick together and be in a pride. But how about the prey? Do you think they'll know what to expect? Let's say it's day one, and an antelope is grazing in the African savanna, unaware that a new predator is on the loose. He might see this animal and think it's a lion, but it's a little different. The antelope doesn't know what to do. The tiger moves closer and closer until he knows that he can make his attack, and it's too late for the antelope. Now, we're not saying that the antelope would have fared much better if it knew it was a tiger. But all of these animals would be extremely confused as to who this new predator is and what they're going to do to them. But if the tiger is competing with the other predators of the African savanna, what's going to happen there? These are animals who know who's in charge. Lions are in charge, then leopards and cheetahs. You've got hyenas thrown into the mix. Lions and hyenas are rivals. They don't get along too well. Cheetahs and leopards know to avoid lions, but they'll fight with each other too. Everyone knows who they're fighting against and who's in charge. Now there's a new predator to fight for supremacy. And what do you think is going to happen when they realize that the tiger is the biggest big cat of them all? If lions are fighting tigers, the tiger might win. It's not going to be easy. And some lions will definitely win their fair share of fights. But if we have to put our money on one, it's the tiger. Leopards and cheetahs can give up. They're both fast but not faster than a tiger. They're both strong, but not stronger than a tiger. And they're not as heavy as a tiger. Then again, the leopard might be okay. He's quite accustomed to being up in the trees, and he's got a home there. Tigers can climb, but not as well as leopards. He might be safe. The cheetah, if he can outrun a tiger, maybe he's got a chance. But the tigers would surely make themselves known, even to the lion, and let them know that a new king is in town. chaos in the savanna. And what would this all cause? Well, the pecking order that is already in place in the African savanna might be thrown into absolute chaos. All of these animals know who to hunt, where to hunt, when to hunt, and how to hunt. But the tigers change everything. They're going to take food from lions. They're going to go after the same prey and hunt at the same times. So, who wins? Who gets the food? The strongest? The one who stalks the best. The one who strikes the quickest. All of these cats have their skills, and the tiger is one of the best. He's good at hiding, he's good at waiting, and he's very strong. He's got a good chance of winning, but he's got to fight. Tigers were removed from certain areas like Iran and Turkey in the early 1970s because they were hunted out of those places. People realized that even though the tiger is the apex predator, it still needs to be protected. So, people have an idea of what happens when tigers are removed, and it's a terrible idea to do so. It destroys the balance of everything else. But to add tigers somewhere, it would be something new altogether. It would throw everything off balance and set the whole region into disarray. The tigers would be the ones to watch. They'd fight for supremacy and possibly get it. 
They change the way that other predators go about their days and how the prey has to look out for them. The African savanna might just not be ready for the introduction of a new big cat. Conclusion So what if tigers were introduced into the African savanna? You would get a show. They'd stir everything up and fight for their food and fight to survive and fight to be king. It would be a whole new pecking order. There might be some chaos. There might be some blood. There might be some tears. But in the end, it would be a showdown for the ages and one you'd never forget.